Oh my gosh, come on, Trump, man. When some people talk about artificial intelligence in a supercharger network, they need to Google. Okay, somebody needs to Google with this guy. JD, you got no excuse. You're a young guy. You're supposed to be tech savvy a bit. Come on, man. Come on. Tesla has a better plan than Trump, okay? And we're going to be talking about AI for a bit, and then I'll be able to discuss energy and Tesla actually being able to solve this problem. And then lastly, the supercharger network, because I have to combat ignorance, even if it comes from the president candidate. Let's continue. Back fast. What's your plan for AI? Well, we're going to be big for AI, but you know, AI requires unbelievable amounts of electricity. Absolutely. You know this. Do you know we need twice as much electricity as we currently have in our country for AI, but the environmentalists won't let you produce it? They now, here we go. Now, we can solve a lot of that with our energy department. Okay, so the batteries in which we're creating are going to be able to capture the energy that's already being wasted. So it's not so much of getting more generation, saying let's burn, let's do oil and coal. That's Look, I'm not even going to say nothing against that, but you still have to be able to capture it. We're still going to have to build out a system of storage. Literally, AI and our current infrastructure just operates on energy that's plugged in and being generated at the same time. We need to be able to store some of that energy. That's going to be more efficient, right? Now, just trying to generate more energy when we don't have the capacity to store it at all is not a good way or a good approach to go about it. Us being able to use these batteries are really going to help this problem out. So Tesla, Tesla specifically, when it comes down to the mega packs, is a perfect solution for this AI demand which is going to demand more energy. And it's also going to allow us to get more out of our current systems. They want wind. The wind is blowing today. The <laughs> whole thing is the most expensive hoax in the world. The wind, it kills our birds. If you want to see a bird cemetery, go under a windmill sometime. You'll see a bird. That, you know, if you shoot a bald eagle or an eagle of any kind, they put you in jail for two years. Go under a windmill, see how many eagles are under there. Nobody goes to jail. It's They say the environmentalists like them. I don't know what's to like. It ruins everything. And it's, it's the single most expensive form of energy. And then, by the way, every nine... And again, birds, my guy. Birds, my guy. <laughs> hey, look, you can't be a master of all trades, I guess, right? But birds, my guy. And we're talking about when, like, let's just capitalize on our current infrastructure and the way we're doing things and be able to actually make it more effective and efficient with mega pack batteries, right? We don't have the ability to store energy. Our energy is so insecure that the sand tax, the code that we utilize to manage the energy software in our grid is old and outdated. The people that still know how to write in that code are phasing out. They're like 60 plus. And the new generation does not know how to write this code. Like if, if you get one of those jobs, you get paid above six figures straight off the bat entry level because the demand is high. The transmission systems are old and outdated and can't carry enough voltage on its current lines. We have zero storage. And now we need more demand because of AI. And so the issue is not so much generation, how are we going to generate it? Coal, oil, whatever. We still need to be able to store it. And this is where Elon comes into play. I think a lot of times people just become anti-environmentalists and just ignore the science. The science get caught up and the technology gets caught up and seen as environmentalism versus just technology. Like you, you see what I'm saying? A car that operates off of electricity is not coming in the name of climate change. Like those two things don't have to go together. It could just be more effective and efficient and cheaper and more safer. Like that could be its basis, but people turn it into this environmentalist climate change. And of course, a lot of people have marketed it like that. So people can't really separate the technology from the actual movement 
or political campaign for another claim that the weather's changing due to X amount, X, Y, and Z reasons. Nine years, you have to replace them. They're falling apart off the coast of Nantucket. No, Shut apart. down all the yeah. beaches but right These now. are mechanical machines. You know, people think, oh, we built them, but you're going to have to replace them, and especially the ones in the ocean. The, yeah. the salt water just absolutely eats through the steel like it's nothing. Anyway, we have a lot of things to do, and we can do it. We'll do it fast, and we do it with common sense. You know, I call it the party of common sense because 90% of the things we've talked about over the years, common sense, like... We don't want all electric cars. You want an electric car, it's great, but not everybody wants an electric car. They want to go far. They don't want to pay China, or they don't want to pay too much because an electric car is more expensive. Does Elon Musk hate it when you bash electric cars? Electric car is about the same price. Tesla is about the same price. It's the same price. It's not more expensive. It's the same price. So we have to dismantle nonsense like that, right? And whether it's 10 20%, it's a free market. So whether it's 50%, now, should it be mandated by the government? No. Get that part. But if people want it, then people can get it. But also ignorance about the car's too expensive. And, oh, man, people want to go long miles and drive. You can just rent the old gas car if you want to drive. Most people just don't drive. The science and the data and the information is there. Electric cars. <laughs> well, I love Elon, and I have to tell you this about this. He endorsed me. Mm -hmm. He announced he's giving me $45 million a month, and yet I'm against certain electric cars. I love electric cars for people that want them, people that don't want to drive across the country, people that don't want to go long distances. You'd have to stop too much, but if you go... See, he always says some crazy stuff like that. Like, bro, let the customers decide what they want to do. People who want to go long distance can't get the car. Like, that's cap. You got to stop too much. Like, you got to stop anyways driving a gas car, but you never stop. Like, Trump, I want to see you bang out 1,000 miles and never stop. Like, come on, my guy. Back and forth or whatever. I think they have a great place. And here's the thing with Elon's, it's amazing. And I, I keep waiting. He has never once, as you know, he endorsed me just recently. And I've been making this whole thing about electric cars and the mandate for electric cars, another mandate for the electric cars. And I'll tell you, he's never called me and said, could you lay off the electric car thing? Because I think electric cars are fantastic for certain people. So right now you're selling 6%, 7%. They want you to go to 100% all electric. And the other day I saw they built chargers now, this is the part right here, the charges. They built charges. Like, that's like saying they built a Ferrari somewhere and it was 200 or 100 million dollars. And that's not like we can't, man, they made a Ferrari and it was 200 million dollars. Can you believe that? Everybody can't get a 200 million dollar car. Like, okay, first of all, they create cheaper Ferraris and then there's other cars. So, what are you talking about? So, he's going to give the worst example of some cronies. I probably took a L on building out superchargers, but after he spits his nonsense, I'm gonna actually come in with some facts, okay? Like a gas pump. <laughs> right. Some place in the Midwest. They built eight charges. It cost nine billion dollars and two of them don't work. Okay, nine billion dollars. Right. This country doesn't have enough, the whole world doesn't have enough money to we don't have enough money to even think about mm -hmm. it. It would cost five trillion dollars to build charges so that we could charge the electric car. And yet- Five trillion? What is he talking Hold on, man. Guys, God dang. We already have a supercharger network over the country. This is facts, not Trump's ignorance and Vance's ignorance. He over here just shaking his head like a puppet. Like, come on, man, correct your homie because your homie's on drugs right now. Look at that. That didn't cost Elon or Tesla nine trillion or 10 billion. The supercharger network is there. Supercharger network is there. Let me not just show you the picture of the currently existing supercharged network, which Trump is saying somehow we can't do, but it's already there. Let me also show you the actual cost of building it out. And Tesla, I'm not talking about this crazy situation where some people built eight chargers and then they spent a billion dollars. So from the basis of the most extreme case, I'm going to then say it's going to take nine trillion to build it out. Like, and this is how somebody thinks that's in charge that's going to write policies about this thing. Like, that's ridiculous. Literally, the price tag is 60000 to 350000 for the network.
But then he goes on and says, it's going to cost $9 trillion to build out across America as if they're not already in place, right? And then $9 trillion, my guy, because you took one extreme example where they built eight chargers for $8 billion allegedly? Okay, let's say they did. You have to look into that and say, why is that so? So maybe do your job as a president or future president and go figure out why some people spent that much money on eight chargers when you could go see the price of a Tesla supercharger around sixty to $350,000. Like, come on, guy. And he's saying this to the masses. And, and, and then Capoose are sitting there like, yep, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that make about a lot of sense. Like, it, 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 it doesn't surprise me, guys, okay, <laughs> that people think like this, okay? It doesn't surprise me. But it, like I said, these are the people we're calling super smart. Like, come on. Now, you can't know everything, but it's best just to be quiet. And yet, under our feet, we have more liquid gold than any country in the world, including Saudi Arabia and including Russia. Five trillion. So a bunch of people are going to go around and say it costs 20 trillion, five trillion to build a supercharger network so it's impossible. When that's a complete lie. And we're going to start. Or inaccurate. Using it. And we're going to start paying down debt and lowering taxes. Yeah. The, the president talks about jobs all the time, the effect of jobs. If you go to 100% electric cars, everybody that's making carburetors, transmissions, yeah. traditional gas-powered cars are going to be out of a job. If you and it's funny. Tesla is the one who actually created jobs. Tesla is the one who actually opened up four factories across America when those same people left left america so here you are in one second defending other companies that literally left and i'm not mad at them that's their right but talking about ev market which has brought jobs to america it's made texas a hell of a state and a heck of a city in austin it's turned nevada into deserted land into some of the most best factories we have on the planet in the world. This is the stupid ignorance, man. Like, yo, let me get the let me let the mic back up because I'm about to go ham on these losers. And people don't think these guys are co-ops. Look, Trump just told you that Elon doesn't call him and tell him lay off the EV. It sounds like these ninjas get calls from gas companies and OMEs, OEMs, excuse me to watch what they say, because at the end of the day, we have the best manufacturing technology. Go check out the video that I just dropped, Wonder of the World, Giga Berlin. Some of the best factories on the planet, the most advanced. If, if, if we were a Chinese company, the government would love Tesla. They would be like, oh, I'm all for it. They built some of the most advanced factories we have in the planet. Prior to that, China had that crown. You better start putting some respect on Tesla's name and stop coming at EVs. I don't know who you're saying EVs. There is no EV competitors in America besides Tesla. You sound stupid. That would be like the Chinese government coming down on BYD. Like they promote BYD, you idiots. And they still have other car companies that they support too, gas companies. But they don't go against a whole market that could create jobs and factories across their country. This is the ignorance. It's on both sides. I don't know how anybody's sitting up here thinking that these two know anything. Like, I'm finna go off. Because this is just nonsense. We showed you the price. We showed you the network. It exists already. We've built it. Don't worry about it. Here come these guys talking about it's going to take $20,000 trillion to build out the network. Okay, they didn't say that. But $9 trillion, $5 trillion? When it's already built? Come on, man. And then here he comes, JD. Let me let me just ad lib and say nonsense with you. If you go to 100% electric, Pennsylvania, Michigan become economic wastelands, especially Michigan. Again, another reason it's important to elect President Trump. Drill, baby, drill. Right, drill, baby, drill. <laughs> right, that, 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 it's such a simple line, but it's true. Like I said, we have basically unlimited energy resources we just have to allow our own people to get it out of the ground before we let you and even if you do that even if you start drilling you have to store it 
in the same EV market that you're making fun of, that you're telling people it's going to take five trillion. Like, it's the same EV market that E, the E is still necessary, moron. Electric, we create batteries, storage pack batteries, mega power, mega walls, mega packs. We got mega packs and power walls. We create both of those for houses and for industrial and national use. You need us still, morons. Use your brain for once. Jeez Louise. Man, two ignorant guys just going on a rampage. <laughs> drill, baby. Drill, baby. Drill. You could drill all you want, moron. You still have to convert it to electricity, send it through your transmission lines, and send it to the places and where they go. Then you still deal with an inferior system to manage the grid and the electricity, the shutdowns. The energy industry has been yelling for the last decade about the inefficiencies and the problems, our grid is hella old. It's decades old. And you're talking, drill, baby, drill. What's drill? It's simple. Drill, baby, drill. It's not simple to govern a nation of 350 million and try to supply artificial intelligence with the energy that's necessary. It's not simple when you have Russians and Chinese spies and Hackers trying to take down our energy grids. It's not simple. Just drill, baby, drill. You still need to convert it. You still need to manage it. You still need to transport it. And you still need to protect it. It still needs to be encrypted. Man. But let's make fun of the EV market, which is actually providing the solution for us. Take off the V and focus on the E. Can you understand that? And even if you start drilling, you still need Tesla. We need to convert that energy into battery to store it. You need to store the energy. Man, get these mans out of here. Tesla has a better plan than Trump. Private industry has always been better than government. Okay, so I don't expect much out of these guys. I never do with politicians. Left or right, I don't care. They've always been losers and behind the curve. History has shown that. The real innovators from Henry Ford, John D. Rockefeller, w. William Bowen, Carnegie, they really made steel industries. Caroline, gasoline, refineries, railroads from the Vanderbilt. That was an extreme technology for transportation. Henry Ford, Model T. It wasn't no politicians. Politicians are always behind the curve talking ignorance like JD, Biden, and Trump. They don't know nothing about technology. They just need to read books and stay over there somewhere and focus on some foreign policies or something like that. When we start talking about engineering and technology, these guys are lost in the barbecue sauce. So talking about you drill, baby, drill. It's common sense to govern a nation of 350 million that's competing with the rest of the world. Around about 7.7 .7 billion people. It's easy to beat strong nations like China. It's easy to beat strong nations like Russia. It's easy to figure out what's the next revolution on the back of industrial revolution, but the revolution of technology, information and data and artificial intelligence on the horizon, that's an easy thing. And you got two, guys, I'll see you in the next one. I gotta get out of here, man. The ignorance is too strong with these two. Like, I don't care who you rock with, left or right. When it comes to engineering, y'all need to get out of here. I see you guys on the next one. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Because these mans are crazy. Before I leave, let me go ahead and just hit you with the map. Five trillion. Come on, my guy. Look at the map. Y'all guys just look at that. Five trillion. It's going to take five trillion. We can't do it. We got stuff in Canada. 50,000 superchargers. Tesla owns and operates the largest global fast charging network in the world. Located on major routes near convenient amenities. Superchargers keep you 
charged when you're away from home. So simply plug, charge, and go. But I guess we're going to leave it to these guys to say that it's harder and you need $9 trillion, 20000000000000 to still build it out. Man, get these guys out of here. I'll catch you guys on the next one.